Okay, so in this video, we're going to start talking about free fall. Okay, so our, our third unit, unit three, is about free fall and projectile motion. Um, and as we'll see here in just a few minutes, it actually connects to our past uh, couple of units over constant velocity and constant acceleration. Okay, so just to kind of lead us into this unit, I want you to think about the answer to this question. Okay, true or false, heavier objects always fall faster than lighter objects. Okay, so try to decide if you think that's true or false. Okay, and the answer to the question is actually false. Um, I think kind of intuitively people think that heavier objects fall faster than lighter objects. Um, I've even seen some people talk about how heavier objects have a stronger gravitational pull than lighter objects, which is true, um, but heavier objects also resist changes in motion more than lighter objects. They have more what's called inertia, and we'll talk about that in the next unit. Um, but it's actually not true that heavier objects always fall faster than lighter objects, although it is possible for heavier objects to fall uh, faster than lighter objects in certain situations. And I think one reason that we um, we think that is because here on Earth, where we, we've had all of our experiences, there's what's called air resistance. Okay, And so when you talk about air resistance, for a falling object, as an object falls through the air, it collides with the air particles, and those air particles slow the object down. And typically, lighter objects tend to um, respond to that more than heavier objects. And so, um, while it is true that sometimes heavier objects can fall faster than lighter objects uh, with air resistance, if you were to remove that air resistance completely, then you would see that actually heavier objects and lighter objects fall at the same rate. And so what I want you to do is I want you to watch these two videos I'm going to link. Okay, the first one t um, takes place on the moon. Um, it was re recorded decades ago, and you can actually see um, he, when he drops a hammer and a feather, what happens with that. And the second video takes place here on Earth at, at, at a, a, a NASA uh, location, where they actually have a, um, a room where they can suck all of the air out. And you'll see before and after they, they drop a feather and a bowling ball, and you can see what the effect that the air resistance has on that. Okay, so um, watch those two videos I'm going to link and then answer a few questions about them. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed those two videos. And so what we're going to talk about now is what's called free fall. Okay, so all falling objects undergo an acceleration uh, due to gravity of the Earth. Okay, now we've talked about acceleration in the last unit. Basically, acceleration occurs when an object's velocity changes. And so in the case of a falling object, um, the object um, has a change in velocity and actually typically falls faster and faster and faster. And that acceleration comes from gravity. And Galileo did a lot of experiments hundreds of years ago dropping things off the Tower of Pisa. And at, at the time, he believed that heavier objects uh, fell faster than lighter objects. But what he, what he actually found is um, that's not necessarily uh, the case, especially when air resistance is negligible. That means too small to be ignored. And he actually showed that all falling objects accelerate at the same constant rate. Okay, now, same constant rate is important because I'm, I'm telling you that we have constant acceleration, and we know how to solve problems with constant acceleration because that's what the last unit was about. Okay, so objects, um, as long as you can ignore air resistance, regardless of their mass or how high they're dropped, um, all have the same acceleration due to gravity. Now, the symbol for the acceleration due to gravity, instead of writing A for acceleration, we write g for the acceleration due to gravity. Now, the acceleration due to gravity on Earth is approximately 10 meters per second squared. Okay, it's actually more like 9.8, but we can use 10 um, for Earth. Um, on different planets, they would have a different acceleration due to gravity. For example, on the moon, the acceleration due to gravity, I believe, is about 1.6, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so we're going to use the value of 10 meters per second squared, and because the direction is down for that acceleration due to gravity, we are going to put a minus sign on that um, acceleration due to gravity. 
Now, does that mean um, that falling objects are slowing down because they have a negative acceleration? No. Remember, acceleration has nothing at all to do with how fast your object is moving. It just tells you how much your velocity changes by each second. Okay, so now we're dealing with constant acceleration, um, but it's constant acceleration for falling objects. All right, and I'm just going to do a few more slides because this is just an introductory video. We talked about air resistance before. Anytime an object is falling through the atmosphere, there's some type of air resistance because the falling object is colliding with those air particles. Um, if you have what's called a vacuum, a vacuum is basically a situation where you've removed all of the um, atmosphere from, from a room or from a container. Objects falling in a vacuum, that means with no air resistance, are in what's called free fall. Okay, so that's why the first part of this unit is called free fall. Basically, the definition of free fall means that the only um, the only force acting on an object is the force of gravity. And we'll talk more about forces later, but that's kind of the definition of free fall. And again, what we have with free fall problems is we have constant acceleration due to gravity. And we spent the last unit looking at constant acceleration. And so we should be able to solve problems with those constant acceleration um, equations that we've seen before. Now just to look at one or two more slides of notes, um, we've also seen this before because um, it, it was one of, one of the examples we did with acceleration. So when I say that the acceleration due to, due to gravity, g, that's a lowercase g, is negative 10 meters per second squared, what does that mean? Well, here we see a girl and she drops a ball and when she drops the ball, she drops it from rest. And so the velocity when she drops the ball is zero meters per second. Okay, as the ball falls, you can see on the right side, this is at one second, this is at two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds. On the left, we can see how her speed, okay, just the number part of the velocity is changing. Every one second that passes, the, uh, the velocity of the ball changes by negative 10 meters per second each second. Okay, and so that's what that value of negative 10 meters per second squared means. It means that falling objects, their velocity changes by negative 10 meters per second every second. Okay, and so you should be familiar with the concept of acceleration from the last unit. Now, in this unit, we'll see two types of problems. We'll see what's called free fall problems, and we'll see problems with, uh, with what's called projectiles. Okay, so... We kind of talked about the, the definition of free fall before when an object is only acted upon by the force of gravity. Um, an object that is just a normal free fall is just falling straight up or down. Okay, so for example, if you look at the picture here, the ball that is red, that is just a normal object in free fall. Okay, and it's just going straight down. Now, the ball that's in yellow is also in free fall, but this is what's called a projectile. And a projectile is moving in two dimensions and not just one dimension. Okay, so not only is it falling down, but it's also moving horizontally, side to side. Okay, so examples of projectiles could be, you know, um, a bullet being shot, um, baseball, basketball, football, anything that's that's moving through the air and, and falling, but also moving horizontally, okay, side to side. Okay, and we'll talk more about projectiles later. For now, we're only going to focus on objects that are falling straight down. Now, again, um, when we're dealing with free fall situations, um, free fall, objects in free fall have a constant acceleration. And so typically what we would do at this point is we would see that, um, you know, we had three equations for constant acceleration. We really have the same three equations for free fall because it's the exact same situation, because it's still constant acceleration. Okay. It, as long as it's constant acceleration, whether the objects are moving side to side or up and down, uh, you still have these equations. And so these equations should look kind of familiar from the last unit. Okay, we've replaced the A's with the G's. And instead of delta X, notice that we have delta Y. Okay, and so this is what we call vertical displacement. So we've talked about displacement b before. In the past, we used delta x because the objects were just moving side to side. So here we use delta y, 
it's still displacement, it's still measured in meters, but now because the objects are moving up and down, we use delta y. Now actually what we're going to see is um, we're, we're not going to do super complicated problems with free fall. In fact, we're only going to do uh, free fall problems where objects are falling down. And so that's going to uh, really simplify the equations that we're going to be using. Okay, so I'm just going to look at one more um, kind of concept example, or two more concept examples. Okay, example 0 0.25 is just to show you, um, you know, what, what happens if you throw a ball up into the air versus what happens if you drop a ball from rest. Now, remember that the acceleration due to gravity is negative 10 meters per second squared. Okay, the negative sign indicates the direction. But also remember that's constant acceleration, number one. And number two, remember that acceleration has nothing to do with which way an object is moving. It has nothing at all to do with how fast an object is moving. So if I throw a ball up into the air, let's say I throw the ball up at 20 meters per second. Okay, so look at this table on the left. My velocity starts off at a pause of 20 meters per second. Now because of gravity, the acceleration due to gravity is negative 10 meters per second squared. Every one second that passes, my velocity changes by negative 10 meters per second. So after one second, it's gone from 20 to 10. After another second, it's at zero. And here, my object is at rest. And so the object goes up into the air. It stops at its highest point, and now look at what's happening to the velocity. It goes from 0 to negative 10, then to negative 20, then to negative 30. The, the negative sign just indicates that the ball is now moving in the negative direction, so it's falling down, but it's falling faster and faster and faster. So if, when you throw a ball up into the air, okay, the velocity is positive when it's going up, it's 0 at its highest point, and then the velocity is negative as it's falling down. But notice that the acceleration never changed because it's constant acceleration. Okay, likewise, if I were to, you know, just let's say I drop, drop a ball like off a roof or something and it drops from rest, notice that at the beginning it's dropped from rest so the velocity is zero and every second that passes the velocity changes by negative 10 meters per second um, each second. Okay, so it's falling faster and faster and faster and faster and faster, and the negative sign indicates that it's falling down. Notice that my acceleration is still the exact same. It's still negative 10 meters per second squared. Okay, so objects in free fall, it doesn't matter if they're moving up or moving down, the acceleration is constant. The velocity changes because, you know, there's acceleration due to gravity, but the acceleration itself does not change. Okay, and I think we're going to go ahead and stop the video here. In the next video, we are going to do some calculations with freefall. As always, please let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you guys in the next video.